Hey, good morning, everyone. Praful here, and uh, welcome to yet another episode of the Candid Traders Podcast, Decluttered, where we bring in the stories of successful professional traders, which will help you to improve your trading game. So, usually, क्या होता है? Lot of these trading videos they only focus on the strategies, entry, exit points, and all that. But we focus on having this raw, unfiltered, candid content from the traders and. तो ये स्टोरी से आपको क्या देखना पड़ेगा देखो आई बिलीव दैट इफ यू आर इन द मार्केट इफ यू कैन सस्टेन लाइक फर्स्ट वन ईयर और टू इयर्स इन द मार्केट यू विल इवेंचुअली क्रैक द स्ट्रेटजी यू विल इवेंचुअली फाइंड योर स्वीट स्पॉट यू विल इवेंचुअली फाइंड योर मोजो तो डोंट फोकस मच ऑन द स्ट्रेटजी पार्ट बट इंस्टेड फोकस ऑन द जर्नी ऑफ दिस पीपल बिकॉज eventually everyone started as an amateur eventually everyone started with a small capital eventually everyone had to convince their family because even now let's accept that trading is still considered gambling so ye part pe aap focus karo ki as a newbie if you want to start out your career in trading how do you approach your uh, initial days how do you handle the drawdowns how do you handle your uh, novice phase how do you convince your parents how do you raise capital how do you uh, convince your partner so these are the things you can take from these interviews so we have another eng guy eng trader with us i think he's probably the engest of the lot that uh, we have had on a show aditya trivedi he's quite popular on twitter and uh, though he's eng he has got a good amount of trading experience under his belt so ye episode mein you're going to get a lot of insight from aditya so welcome aditya thank you for the kind introduction It's a pleasure to have you with us, Aditya. Really looking forward, and I think you know each episode our guests are getting younger and younger. I'm starting <laughs> exactly. to feel older and older, <laughs> and uh, it's so nice to see that uh, you know, the the financial education that is there. That um, you know these days, a lot of traders starting off very young and uh, are doing so well. And Aditya is a prime example of that. So it's a pleasure to have you with us, Aditya, and uh, looking Thank forward you. to everything you have to say. All right, so. I started trading four years back in my final year of graduation, and I asked for one lakh from my mom and dad, and it was very hard to convince them. They were a bit skeptical about stock markets, so I tried to convince them, and I put in that one lakh rupees into Siroda account, and I used to trade basically. I used to trade from my classroom while I was going out, while I was traveling, and I was a very clueless person. I didn't know how to read charts. I didn't know anything basically, and I just used to take random trades, and I did everything. I would try everything: futures, cash, intraday trading, option buying, option selling. I did do it with one or two loss, but on one lakh rupees, the returns were very small, and I didn't do option selling basically with that one lakh rupees. So I was constantly searching for holy grails. I used to go to YouTube and find for strategies for indicate. MACD strategy, RSI strategy. So I was, I have done all of that basically, and I was so stupid. If I lost in a particular stock, uh, I wanted to take revenge on the same stock itself, and same goes with option strike price. And I was very stupid basically. After that, I graduated. I was still searching for strategies. I and also I applied for few jobs, but I didn't make it through. So. i was not sure what should i do and i was also full of self doubt i was not sure if trading can be a full time career or not is it even possible to make money from trading so i joined twitter and that's when things changed so when i saw on twitter i saw few people who were making huge money there were three or four of them i think and they were posting screenshots of 50 lakh 40 lakh 1 crore in a single day and i was shocked after seeing that how is that even possible so i searched what are they doing and they were selling options so what happened after, after that was i searched everything about option selling i went to youtube i searched how to do option selling and after that i took 5 lakh rupees from my parents again so i took 4 lakh so the total was 5 lakh i think and after that it was my I traded the first ever expiry. It was Thursday, with five lakh rupees, and I ended up with five thousand rupees. And I was so happy that day. That wow, I made one percent, and Bank Nifty stayed at the same point, and I still made money. Still, the options fell. It was new to me, basically option selling. So that kept on going, 
I started to date. When was this, Aditya? Which it year? It was in this? 2018. Okay. And at so that you started time, as young as 20. Yeah, 20. What are you doing, Sir? I don't even know. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Please go on, Aditya. Okay, so at that time, Bank Nifty was very easy to date. You could sell a 50 50 angle and go to sleep. And after waking up, you can book your profits. It was that simple. <laughs> it didn't need any adjustments, especially on Thursdays. So I started to trade, but there was one problem after that. There were only four Thursdays in a month. So what should I do on the rest of the days? So that was a big problem for me. I wanted more practice. I wanted to trade more. So I started to trade on other days too. I started to carry overnight positions. And soon after I started to carry overnight positions, I faced my first ever big gap. So what happened was it was a Wednesday and Bank Nifty was going up. It was a clean trend day. It was going up. The calls were spiking and Bank Nifty closed at day high. After that, on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Yeah, and I only carried put options overnight. I had only puts because Bank Nifty closed at day high. The calls closed at day high. It was a clean trend day and I was expecting a gap up. So I just had. So what happened was on Wednesday at 8 p.m. I saw Dow Jones. It was down by 1000 points and it was still falling. After that, I saw all global markets were in red. SGX was still falling and I was shocked. I was scared. I had trouble sleeping basically that night. I woke up at 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Just to check SGX Nifty, I again went to sleep. Again, I woke up. And finally, when the markets opened, I was ready with the square of all button. And I kept on pressing square of all button, but I could not exit. The options had freezed at the open itself in Bank Nifty oh, wow. after this huge gap down. And I was just constantly pressing it for half an hour. And that half an hour was the worst time I could ever face. I could not what, even... What was the event, position. Aditya, if you could recall? I'm not sure, but it was just a gap down. When All was the it? the global markets were down. When was it? It was in 2018, towards the end, I think. Towards October, November, December. Was I'm it not paper sure tantrum? Exactly. I don't think so. I'm not sure, but the markets closed at day high and it opened with a huge gap down. Okay. No, man. 2018 is much after taper trend. Yeah, I guess. It was yeah. when huh. interest rates were going up. Mm. Yeah. Huh. Okay, but basically it was like a 2% gap down or something, or was it more than that? Uh... I'm not sure. It was a bit more than that. Okay, I'm not fair sure enough. about that, but I ended up losing like 6% of my capital. That half an hour must have been like probably the worst 30 minutes of your life. You the longest 30 minutes of his life. Options were frozen. And, and... I could not exit. And what, what was your mark to market uh, at that time and against the profits you had made so far? I mean, how bad was it? It was uh, like, like a, as a percentage. Or something. It was okay. a 40, yeah, it was like 40, 50 gain loss and I was trading with approx um, six and a half lakh, I think. Okay. I had added a bit more capital, I think six and a half or seven lakhs. Okay. So it was huge. I mean, that for that, it's almost reaching yeah, 10%, it was huge and like 8%. It was my first ever gap down. And mm. I was a complete beginner. I was a newbie. So obviously right. it was shocking for me. It was bad. And I shut down my screen. I went to sleep. And I woke up at 3 o'clock. I went to sleep like good time. Four, five hours. And I woke up at 3 o'clock. And then what I saw was that Bank Nifty after gapping down was at the same point itself. And the options which I had sold went to zero. So I was oh. now even more frustrated. I just booked a huge loss. And these options could have given me profit. But in hindsight, it was the right thing to do. It could have gone further down. So again, that was my first ever experience with the big gap down. Aditya, yeah. let's just talk about, you know, how you managed to convince your parents. Because you said that you were still in college. You were in the final year. Usually final yeah. year, mein students to bike ke paise mangte hai, ya trip ke paise mangte hai. Friends ke saath parties karne ke liye paise mangta hai. And what was the reaction of your parents when you asked for mom, like, I want to gamble. That, that's what everyone calls. So I want to gamble. Give me one lakh. What was the reaction when you said this? So my mom and dad both were very skeptical. They didn't agree initially. I had to convince them a lot physically. Okay. How did you and convince I, them? And kya, kya bol I was ke convince like, kya? 
<laughs> I just told them like, uh, it's just one lakh, and if it goes, it goes. If it okay. goes away, I will learn something. Okay. Just give it to me. I want to try it out. Guys, I think this is the best approach. Whenever you try want to convince anyone of something, okay, just give them the worst case scenario and tell them, bro, look at this. Yeah. Even the worst case scenario is not the end of the world. So okay. let let's and consider uh, exactly. Let's let's go with the fact that okay, only the worst case scenario is gonna happen. And even with the worst case scenario, okay, what's what's the worst that could happen? You lose one lakh. So by losing one lakh, are we gonna come on streets? Are we gonna stay hungry? No. I think uh, see. In that way, Indian parents, um, at least in urban cities, they are always a little bit encouraging of their kids. You know, they want their kids to do well, yeah. and especially if someone comes and says, "Son, son, comes and says that I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. Like, give me the opportunity." No mm-hmm. parent who is like, you know, uh, even middle class, upper middle class will think towards because okay, one lakh, what is going to happen? Maybe it is a few months' salary, right, of the parents. Uh, maybe it is like this thing, but it could be an entire career opportunity. This kid is showing lot of interest, and like you don't want to feel like you didn't support. So that that way is there, but you know there will be cases where the family cannot afford that also, and that that is mm-hmm. there. So you will have to find other ways of actually showing something before you can start with one lakh. But I think that way, parents, Indian parents, are always the kinds who, if your kid comes and says, "Boss, my." i want to do this you help me out they they will try their best to do that and of course if you are positioned in a good situation where maybe uh, one lakh isn't so significant uh, at all then th- that is not an issue and after that obviously dikhana uh, padta hai ki this is what i'm capable of this is what i'm doing um, because any father will look at your business plan as a business plan at least in indian farm my father like uh, went to him and said <laughs> i want uh, 10 lakh rupees to do this it's okay batao like what is the plan what is my uh, what am i looking at how is my money going to grow or uh, this thing so they will they will break you down so uh, that's there but awesome aditya like to start off so young and uh, just to, to add to this reyes whenever whenever you uh-huh. receive money from your parents if you're not trading with your own savings or if you're not if the corpus is not yours even if you're losing give them an update keep giving them an update right. dekho is 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 week mera performance aisa raha this was the reason uh, this was the reason because of which i lost so i made this much this was my mistake then they'll they'll feel that okay this guy is accountable this guy is dependable So, I still I say, do the same thing every haan. day, basically. Okay. I still do the same thing. Rose ka bolta hu, MTM. Acha. Whatever happens, if I made or lost anything. Super, so because see, I'll tell you what happens. Losing money is not a problem. You're in a business where mm-hmm. losing money is part yeah. of it, right? But you know, they will always assess once again. Okay, is this a proportionate loss? You've been making X. Does it? Okay, you've been making you know ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand. You lost two lakhs. That doesn't make any sense. right like uh, that structure so they will correct you they will force you to see the mirror and also you won't feel like you're doing something wrong you're not something shameful to lose money when you express that to them and there's that constant communication and obviously at the end of the day it's their money so you have to be accountable to them uh, about it i was trading expiries after that after, after that big drawdown basically it was very hard to bounce back because you see a trader has two things he has to go through two things which is fear and greed so what happens after a big drawdown is that you are scared and also you want to recover your money quickly so when you are afraid to trade even if you sell a 50 rupee option and it goes to 55 you will book loss you will exit and when again it goes to 45 rupees you again enter it goes to 50 rupees you again book loss so you are very afraid and it's not possible to bounce back from a drawdown being very afraid and after that you also have that greed you want to make that money in the same day itself you want to recover all the money within the next few days within a very short time basically which is also not very productive as for me because when you play poker so there's always this one guy who loses a few games and he becomes frustrated and then he goes all in and he bl- and he blows up basically after that so don't be that guy don't be in a hurry to recover your losses too so just take proper position sizing and still you have to take risk even after losing this much you have to accept the risk and you can basically take the trades with proper risk and you can bounce back from a drawdown slowly oh, so i have a question here aditya as a follow up and yeah. this is interesting yeah, because yeah. 
different people have a journey uh, coming up with position sizing how to position size like mm-hmm. um so how, how did you arrive there so because um uh, you know you had a lot of leverage also back then and um so a little mm-hmm. bit uh, more also i think you can tell us about is your trading positional or like intraday or a mix of both or i mean expiry trading though it was intraday but um how did you arrive at what position sizing worked for you because you were trading let's say about Six and a half lakhs, and then um, yeah, you had a forty thousand drawdown, which which is reasonable. But still, you know, being the first largest drawdown, it'll hit your confidence. You know, you'll start it's thinking. It's always hard. The first one is yeah. always hard. Yeah, and it, and one more thing is people don't understand. It's not the loss. It's not the loss that's the problem. The problem is mm-hmm. you start thinking, what if it was more like what if the gap down was twice of this or three times yeah. of this? Then what? Then and would not have been. Confidence is crushed basically. you start to yeah. doubt yourself yeah Am and I you think good enough for this yeah exactly so you think so i know what i'm doing that. i'm getting lucky right so that's that's the question mm-hmm. and so how do you first of all like come up with um, okay this is how i will position size like, where, where okay, did you so come my, up with that from yeah yeah so my goal was not to lose 1 to 2% in a single day that was it i used to take my positions only as per that rule i'm not going to lose more than 1% in a day 1 to 2% whatever was that so that's how i used to position myself and i used to trade intraday and positional it was both actually a mixture of both at that time and positional was also very easy i would say at that time as compared to now as compared to the present conditions where we have big gaps almost every few days and i basically only traded bank nifty uh, short triangles and if bank nifty started to trend i just used to take one side so if it so if it was going up i just used to take puts and i used to carry puts home so in a similar way i used to trade back then excellent so your idea was uh, if i'm getting this right if you are shorting an option let's say for um, um 50 rupees right and mm-hmm. your stop loss on it is um, let me say 70 rupees okay positionally speaking and so that 20 rupees into your position size should not exceed 1 to 2% of your capital so is that what yeah, you're saying you're saying yeah so you something you first come up part. with your loss and you don't want to lose more than that so that's more than that 1% is... of my entire capital i don't want to lose on any given okay. day more than 1 to oh. 2% basically and i didn't use stop losses at that time i used to adjust the positions and adjustments used to work back then it doesn't work very well now but it used to work back then if your 50 rupee option goes to 80 rupees you can sell a 100 to be option on the opposite side and that used to work i think i think it was very easy to manage basically maybe the competition was less i don't know the margins yeah, i mean that that's always there now when when because at that mm-hmm. point of time not much of a content was available online regarding option selling the strategies the adjustments and all that but now mm-hmm. there is plethora of content readily available to people so yeah basically see look at this uh anyone who had 1 lakh 2 lakh or even 5 lakh capital back then they would invariably go to options buying or futures trading because there was a lot of content on futures trading on options buying back then but now even if a person has 2 lakh he'll invariably start with a short straddle 920 straddle karke hi karta hai wo so the number of people doing the same thing has increased and definitely that um, takes some amount of edge from it it's what it's it's true i mean the simple systems which were which used to work in a very uh, smooth way back then now now also they work but they require some amount of uh, intricate tweaking that's it the returns have dropped basically on those systems in the present condition which used to work very well back then true i and shreyas have been like uh, expiry traders and all that so we can see that how mm-hmm. uh, difficult expiry trading has become lately it's not it's not uh, that easy as it used to be before Usually, ninety percent of the times, expiries used to be sideways. It's always expiries always used to be sellers expiries. But now, out exactly. of like five six expiries, we get one sellers expiry. That's more. Exactly. To put it simply, there was a point in not so long ago, so I think barely two years back, like you could do a straddle and just leave it, yeah. more or less leave it. Like you didn't really have to do too yeah. much. You just straddle an expiry. opening and you know, the premiums also we used on nifty would be like 70 80 rupees not more than that like like 70 80 rupees is that would be the rate. and like that's how much it's nothing now 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 we make 100 point move in the first 5 minute candle but yeah. uh, you just let it be it's not the case anymore 
doesn't mean so 100 it point has was got a big deal at that time in a single okay, day so it was, it was a, a big deal yeah Hmm. So since we are talking about volatility, let's just like you know go on a tangent here and let's uh, uh, talk about what Nitin Kamat has said. He said that after the leverage has been taken away, the volatility has dropped. I don't know in what context he is talking about, but uh, intraday me the market is moving one percent. It's making one percent moves at least three times a day. In the same day, the market is moving one percent down, one percent up, and then again one percent down. So. What do you think about that statement? Because see, uh, at the end, he's the biggest broker in the country, and uh, people definitely take his words seriously. And when I read its tweet, I was like, "What the fuck? What is he even talking about?" So, what do you guys think about it? I don't agree with him at all. I think the market has become more volatile. I don't know if he trades or not, but <laughs> the market has definitely become more volatile. Especially in intraday, we have too many random spikes. and it's just very scattered we don't have trending days we don't have proper trending days the market goes up one day and it falls the next day so it's very hard to take positions in such a market so i don't agree with him uh, look i i i don't want to comment on anyone it's like nothing is personal here but um at the end of the day he's a broker he's a very respectable broker he's done a lot of things he's a very good broker also for that matter he's done some really good things for the indian um, financial markets uh, you know he has sort of revolutionized a lot of things but i don't i don't think he would be qualified to talk about um, the market behavior as much as somebody whose bread and butter it is to trade and make money purely out of the market so um, i and I don't know about much else, but at least if you talk about the past six months, eh, there have been some very, very tricky and volatile phases in the market, which I have not seen before. I can't speak for other people. I have not seen such a random behavior at times. Like at times, it's purely random, right? The behavior of markets. It's um, I would say this has been the past six months have been probably one of the most volatile periods in the market. So. Uh, I, I i don't particularly think i mean while i can respect uh, nitin kamath's opinion on a lot of things I, i think i disagree here and like if you if you look at it also i think as far as their trading wing is concerned i was just going through true bacon's last year performance and it has been mm-hmm. abysmally low so it's not like the trading wing has done well they're basically uh, my very good friend my close friend he just pulled out his capital up for one year and two months and he's generated a negative return uh basically slightly less than zero in one year and two months and if you compare that to what the nifty done has done in the same period it's been like around 30% gain <laughs> in nifty so i don't particularly think they are very good traders um so that that is uh, i mean I, you can pull out true bacon's uh, uh, data from anyone who has the documents so quite openly available if you look for it so i don't think they're qualified to talk on that aspect um but uh, Yeah, uh, at the end of the day everyone looks out for their best interest as a broker what he cares about is that his risk has gone down tremendously his reward stays exactly the same in fact it's probably even more 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 and he more people more coming into the yeah more and more yeah exactly and he's a good broker there's no doubt about it look one, yeah, what, what is the main reason i um, i'm still with their brokerage despite having issues is every broker will have issues but one thing that zerodha is knows for a fact that it cannot spoil is its reputation when it comes to uh, uh, reliability and trust see well, the main reason you work with a large broker mm-hmm. is because you know that whatever said and done there's no risk of this broker doing something shady of course any broker mm-hmm. can do something shady at the end of the day but they're quite transparent is, yeah they're quite transparent i like that about them and, and the you platform know, you, is intuitive it's good to use the platform is good the, it's not that you know mm-hmm. you can't come up with a better platform there are some small brokers um you take first stock for example i've been like i know praful also has been um uh, mm-hmm. speaking with uh, vikram who's the founder they're coming up with really good stuff but to an outsider um, you'll always think 10 times before you work with a smaller broker because you're like how safe it is all of those questions and all will also come up and that will take them also time and years of building that trust because trust is the one thing you can't buy overnight right so That's like true. you can't mm-hmm. uh, can't do that i mean but i don't i i disagree deeply when I mean, we come back to your question i i think that is bull I, i'm sure many people agree with me the kind of market behavior we saw I, just like the last 3 months more spec the 3 months and 6 months that period uh, all over the place <laughs> i mean yeah Because that's it's been absolutely a true market right exactly it's been a news driven market no, and in no that no stress i mean see the news driven yeah. market is just being in the last like couple of months 
but before that in the month of september october where there was absolutely no news apart from the fact that okay yahan pe ek third wave aaya ye wo in spite of that the intraday movements were so volatile yeah. i mean see volatility can be uh, how do they uh, how do they come up with volatility you can measure a weeks volatility a fortnight volatility a monthly volatility or an intraday volatility if you say on if you see on a close to close basis okay nifty has moved only 0.3% 0.4% but from point a to point b how many times it has moved like 1% in, in, in within that thing so for me the volatility is bro you take the range of 5 minute candles and check what the volatility is volatility is in that 5 minute candle when it comes to the perspective of intraday players and yeah. the leverage is for the intraday players so when you are talking about leverage and you are talking about volatility like measure it on the same scale yeah what is the average length of a 5 minute yeah, candle yeah average length of 5 minute candle and you can and you can set a base also divided by whatever is the base value of the yeah, exactly in terms of percentage definitely yeah yeah that's interesting i think someone should run that kind of study. i run i ran awesome. it no I ran it already. I've I've run <laughs> okay. it. I've run this, and it has increased almost two point five times. Oh wow. wow! Yeah, I'm talking about percentage. You should publish base. this. You should publish. We this. should. You should put this. Together. I did it with Krishna yeah. only. Put it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah should, I think should, I, like, I th- structure this. Yeah. And, and, and you know, Twitter and make a thread. And ask Mr. Kamat also to comment on it. I'm sure he'll have something <laughs> to say. <laughs> But Aditya, how has it been for you? Because obviously, market phases have changed a lot, and then of course, you know, in your journey, you also had the Corona period. Mm-hmm. What what was that like for you? And um, you know, post Corona, because I know now you handle a substantial amount of funds, right? You're handling over one crore of uh, funds, if I'm not wrong. So, mm-hmm. um, what, how is that? I mean, where did you get from there? You know, early stages to uh, being where you are now. okay so what i think is that the market cycles keep on changing every quarter so the behavior of the market the behavior of the options not going to stay the same it will change for it will change every three months basically so even when we look in the present thursdays used to be great in 2021 it used to be very easy that's not the case in this year itself since jan we are we are having quite volatile expiries so you have to keep on changing as per the market i'm not going very aggressively to trade expiries these days especially but i used to trade very aggressively last year in 2021 so you have to keep on changing and on identifying that something is changing so you have to identify what's changing in the market so what happened was that during the covid crash was not trading much it was the first time i was seeing something like that i and i remember i bought like three or four lot of put options overnight and i made a huge profit right at the open so i was doing such things trading in very small quantities buying options because i was afraid to sell options with me but after the in the recovery phase i started to sell options and it was a great time really and that time continued till 2021 may i think yeah. because the vix falling and you could sell any options basically and it would still go to zero so now it's the time where it's the time where a trader has to identify that it's not the skill that's making you profits it's just the vix crash which is making you such huge profits so you don't have to call yourself an expert so it's hard to identify such things Okay, uh, let's okay. let's briefly talk about you know the uh, the method that you follow to put on your trades. So how do you how do you put your trades? Like what what are the things that you look at? Just 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 okay, give us so a brief all, like super I yeah, mean yeah. surfacial thing. Mm-hmm. Let's not get into details. So first of all, I look at global markets. What's happening? The global futures, basically the Dow futures. How are they behaving? Whether they are up or down? And I just take a rough view from that. I don't rely on it. Just I. Re- I I just take a reference from that. Mm-hmm. After that, I look at what's happening with Bank Nifty, the monthly chart, how is it behaving, the weekly chart, and the daily chart. I just do this once in a week, mm-hmm. and I just see if it's a breakout or it's it's still inside a range. And if Bank Nifty is inside a range, I try to sell neutral options, basically short strangles, naked short mm-hmm. strangles, and then I carry it forward from there as the week progresses. but i don't like to trade on fridays mostly and 
I just go all in on Wednesday and Thursday these days. Mm-hmm. Earlier, I used to carry positions every day, but these days not much into that. I don't even trade with my full size on intraday basis on Friday, Monday, and Tuesdays. So I have a question here. So you are doing mm-hmm. positional um, uh, strangle selling, let's say Bank Nifty, but in weekly expiries, have you considered monthly expiries? Any reason why you um, uh, want? Like, um, you know you or do you do both of them uh, is there any what is the analogy behind why weekly and not monthly i just do it in weekly expiry because it gives you instant profit obviously with the added risk and if you can handle the risk i think it's a good way to trade basically i could be wrong because i know so many people who would not uh, agree with me as to carrying overnight positions but i do carry overnight positions usually and i have reduced it actually in this year itself otherwise i used to carry every day and it does give good profit to me and also i have faced big gaps so again hmm. don't get too so you have the confidence from you know bottom. previously yeah, you have yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. excellent after but have you while, uh, i think you after a certain while i think you become immune to the gaps and you know what to do if you face such gaps so you don't have fear of gaps after that but aditya but still you're taking like overnight yeah. naked positions right so yeah uh, naked there is there is no there is no risk hedge there so what if what if tomorrow market opens at circuit because when i want to put any positional trades put on any position mm-hmm. positional trades the first thing that i'm going to see is okay bro i'm going to assume that today some political assassination is going to happen or some 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 shit's going to just break out and then tomorrow we're going to open at 10% circuit or 20% circuit for that matter so when that happens what would be my mark to market and at that point will i be in a sane rational state of mind to take the corrective actions or to come out or to do whatever just to be in a right state of mind to continue trading so that would be my approach because i don't care okay there is no news flow in the scenario there is no whatever it is but still i consider that okay bro this is the worst case scenario so am i capable of handling that but you are taking like n- naked strangles so do you recommend other people to do it or uh, do you sometimes question ki okay should i be doing it or should i stop doing it or should i reduce my position size or should i hedge it like what are what are, what's your thought process on that all right so i do naked short strangles on wednesday mm-hmm. mostly on wednesday with all my capital and mm-hmm. the way i think it is that you like we all have to die one day basically <laughs> it, ah. it could sound a bit stupid but we all have to die one day and god forbid but you are walking on the street and a car hits you what will happen you have to die one day and i cannot keep on thinking about worst case scenarios every time and i don't know if we have ever opened with a right in the gap itself and if i will lose just think about what will happen to to the traders who carry positional futures they will lose more than me i think yeah the fair enough but here i have uh, the same question so what is your per lot uh, like for for example for 2 lakhs of capital do you you have mm. um uh, are you trading one lot or are, are you trading like how much ever your margin allows you because even someone who's trading positional futures trust me on this there is no way that they have 100% of their margin short or long nifty like uh, for example if i'm a futures trader with 1 crore cap and i have a position mm-hmm. maybe um uh, i'm using 10% 15% 20% of my money it depends that will vary on what kind mm-hmm. of system i'm running but i will not be 100% of my i guarantee you this no futures trader is 100% of their margin longer short yeah yeah it's not going to so, so what is your uh, sizing according to your margin and and secondly uh, since you know positional trading at least when i used to do it i i sort of even if i'm doing weekly selling um, hedged i always want you know it was always the argument of okay monthly will give me enough time because the effect of uh, um, these gamma moves is not going to be so big mm-hmm. i won't feel the need to adjust for delta what happens in weekly is eventually your one leg has no premium so to adjust for delta you kind of have to come very close right so whereas in monthly the premium doesn't go away so quickly so it the mm-hmm. way it is monthly gives you time to react like it it doesn't 
the mark to market swing is not going to be so quick uh, i mean it, it is possible in in a big move but mm-hmm. it's not going to be so fast it gives you the time to react so on these three things like one how do you position size because i i get the analogy of what happens to a futures guy who's mm-hmm. long but mm-hmm. a futures guy is not going to trust me is not using more than 10 15 20% of his mm-hmm. margin on a futures position in fact that is at the higher end nobody is going to be doing it so high uh, so wh- where what is the analogy there aditya all right so i do use all my capital and it's short strangle so if i get screwed i'll just get screwed on one side itself and not on both the sides so again the one side which i'm carrying is not actually with my full capital it might be like 60 70% i think so of my capital yeah i don't know if you get it or not like i yeah, want yeah, to screwed I, I... on both the sides yeah yeah only on one side so so that's not with all my capital i'm going in on that single side itself so that's how i do it and if it opens with a huge gap down something will happen it's not going to stay there it will be very rare for the market to stay there either it will go up either it will go down and even if it stays there the premiums will be huge and it will be easy to manage it in intraday so that's how i i look at it like fair enough i, yeah, I mean yeah i think i think that part. makes a lot of sense because whenever there's a huge mm-hmm. gap down the ivs will uh, definitely spike badly yeah. and then you have mm. a higher chance of making it back up if not completely at least you can recover 30 40 50% of, of your your some part of your losses that's true but still see uh, taking uh, naked positions overnight that gives me chills and i can't have i don't think i can ever have this yolo yolo attitude ha kabhi to kabhi marenge so nay no, matlab see here again once again it comes down to the fact that you know and this is i'm playing devil's advocate here even though i would tend to uh, feel the same way <laughs> is that look people say more damage is done waiting for a black swan than in a black swan itself that's right true. so people that's say true. that's true but at the same time uh, i mean i don't particularly subscribe to the analogy but uh, have you ever thought that there maybe just one rupee option wherever it's available you can buy that also like have you thought of that it's just not worth it um I haven't thought of that. <laughs> okay. I haven't bought options. I think. Okay. ठीक है ना. I mean, I'm used as to hedging hedge. my positions basically. हाँ. Huh. I don't like to hedge because it takes a good chunk of your profits away. True. True. And I'm fine with the risk of the gap down. Hence, I take positions. I have a question. So I don't remember exactly which expiry, but I think it was either like. Twenty fourth Feb. Twenty fourth. This this year. This year. 24th ah, the, ah, 24th huge gap huge down, gap down right? so, uh, i remember yeah, i was yeah, in yeah, goa yeah. that day i remember yeah. it was the worst one i have faced in four years okay w- what was it, it? Was because that day. was bad i remember I remember. Uh, i remember i remember a rupee option opened at like 200 like the 16500 opened at uh, some ridiculous yeah. uh, price yeah, yeah. something like that no it was the uh, same date it was an expiry date it was thursday huh. and we had news of war ukraine war i remember that yeah so what happened so, to you what position were you in and like what happened so on wednesday the market was exactly in a range and i yeah. sold short strangles and it was not just with all my capital i bought hedges for otm oh. so i could take more quantity oh okay yeah <laughs> and then uh-huh. the markets as soon as the markets opened up i was in a loss of like 6 or 7% which was 6 or 7 lakhs okay and towards the end i managed to recover some of it and i closed at 2.8 lakh loss which was 2.8% superb still still so i think I it's, it's decent enough right considering the fact yeah. that on an expiry and when the gamma gamma yeah. is like killing you and in spite of that fact like you closed mm-hmm. at minus 2.8 it's, it's it's good enough like what did you do mm-hmm. uh, like i mean like if you can just walk us through step by step like yeah, what, yeah, what... Sure. so as soon as the markets opened i was watching and i i still didn't square off my puts it was a gap down so i was just watching and then the markets started to go down so i waited for like 15 or 20 minutes and then i squared off my puts and the market was range bound i think so for good one or two hours yes. so i was just sitting there I, i added few calls and as soon as the markets broke the day low i went aggressively on selling calls i had only calls and then it kept on falling and the calls gave me good profits so i sold at the money option and it was quite aggressive i think and that helped me to recover that superb superb uh so you know what was the max loss possible on that position does it 
come back to you do you feel ever that what what was the max loss on this because it was hedged right it was hedged but i did those hedges to go in with just for the margin quantity. benefit just for the margin quantity benefit. i bought those far otm options just okay. for the margin benefit and what i learned is that i should not take net positions with more quantity than my entire capital like i should not buy those hedges basically okay. all my capital is fine if i and and if i use all my capital i would just open with 3 or 4% loss i think 3 or 4 lakh loss which i would have recovered by the end it was not my first gap i had seen so many gaps in these four years and i lost money on these gaps so i knew what to do so basically what i do is is i wait for 15 minutes first of all and how is the market reacting mm. is it is the gap sustaining or is it going back up mm. or, because sometimes the market just fills the gap easily and a lot of time but that usually happens on a gap up day rather than a gap down day yeah so i was very chilled out at that time i was not very stressed out because see i have seen so many gaps so it does become like you do become immune to these gaps at some point or the other uh see this is this is one thing okay you becoming immune to the gaps mm-hmm. and but you mm-hmm. now are trading with a higher quantity you're trading with a higher corpus mm-hmm. and so the mark to market mm-hmm. even though it is in percentage terms the absolute numbers do mm-hmm. tend to have an impact on your psyche right so let's say yeah. the previous gap you handled probably it was uh, at a stage where you was ha- where you were handling like let's say 25 lakhs capital but now the same mm-hmm. kind of gap occurred when you are handling 1 cr capital so the mark to market losses though on a percentage basis they are same the absolute numbers do tend to have an impact right so what was that impact on your mind so what i believe is that you have to look trading as a video game you cannot consider it as a real money that if you lose 7 lakh so you know some people start to think what will 7 lakh buy you i can buy this car i can buy this so you cannot think of trading in that way you have to look at things in percentages and just the video game so that's how i i think it and it keeps the pressure off me otherwise you will be in a lot of pressure if you start to look at absolute figures and you think of it as what can this what can this money buy you that's true so that's an excellent psychological like hack yeah yeah so, so where do you uh, as a video game superb superb so where do you see this progressing aditya what is um, the goal here because you're 24 you're very young so th- th- have you decided that you know first of all congratulations on your new office um, and thank i wish you, you all you. the very best in the you know may may everything be a uh, positive there so mm-hmm. um wait w- what is the idea here like uh, what is the career path that you see yourself in in trading um and and what are your goals around there just to understand a little bit more i am still figuring out that uh i want to scale up my capital more i have to ask more for my for my dad for maybe like that if they support me and i'm still figuring it out i want to grow my capital and just stayed i think so in a better way i think if i'm not wrong like you've, you've already returned close to 70 70 plus percentage this year right it's 100 plus oh yeah it's 100 in 2021 wow. in this financial year Amazing. since first april mm-hmm. yeah and a major chunk came from came from the first three months okay where the vix was crashing okay mm. yeah but i think so now now your parents now your parents can definitely trust you and uh, you know help you increase your scale up your capital and what not yeah yeah they can <laughs> that is amazing that is so nice and uh, you know i think this is where in trading you know people can have different perspectives but at the end of the day it is about uh, what is in your comfort zone and i i something that's respectable and but at the same like this came up earlier also when uh, for example um, I, you guys saw that uh, tweet of uh, uh, mitesh bhai where he's like okay gap down plus made a trading mistake lost 22% mm-hmm. and then recovered 22% 23% like in a, in a day i looked there yeah. and said in my life is not going to happen like if it gap down and i made a mistake i'm closing mm-hmm. that trading day and probably not trading for the next 3 months also like it's not <laughs> in me to do that like and and you know there's one good way of there's this awe of looking at it and saying that wow that's pretty amazing then other way of looking at it and saying look not everyone can do that i can't do that i cannot forget i if that trade first of all has lost me 20% there's no way i'm making it back 
hundred percent. Khalas is gone uh, <laughs> because I know my mind is not going to be able to do that. I don't know if I'm making sense here, but on a regular day, there's no way I'm targeting. Mm-hmm. See, my how do I trade? Be it an expiry, I'm generally targeting one percent. That's my thing. I'm targeting between 0.75 to 1.25 percent. That's my sweet spot. That's what I'm going for. That's how four I, to five uh, lakhs, basically. Yeah, yeah. I'm going four to five lakhs. Mm-hmm. If really it's going very well, maybe some opportunity. I'll sort of take a mm-hmm. uh, my my approach beyond that is I'll take a swing. which is terribly mm-hmm. high risk reward okay it's like it's like very small stop loss either it works or i get pushed out that's the fun mm-hmm. like i get it works or i get pushed out and the cost is very little now such kind of stuff is my trading psychology it has not now i'm holding a position which let's say maximum can overnight let's say can make me 3% or 4% on my capital side and if i'm losing so much it's impossible i'm not the kind of guy who can uh, mm-hmm. do that so the same way for example how uh, to pruffle or me um, your style of trading me like okay this is like you know uh, difficult for us to completely because the way you said into that gap down you were very calm and you were able to reduce that 6% into a 2% that's good. that means that you're the kind of person who functions um, you know in in that environment whereas somebody like me would not you know so yeah. it's very personal at the end of the day um, uh, and uh, it's, it's you it's, can do it i think so i think no i can't can i'll it. tell you why so why the yes, experience exactly the the aditya the uh, people say that okay knowledge skills capital they are the limiting factors in trading but the limiting factor is psychology the limiting factor is your personality if you are a person mm-hmm. who can handle the pressures well if you can handle like the how do i put it the high voltage scenarios in a very calm and composed way then these kinds of positional trading is for you but if you are a person like just by looking at the pre market and seeing that oh fuck like it's opening one and a half percent gap down like i need to be just you know able to exit my positions on the first very first tick then probably it it i'm not saying that uh, uh, we can't do that we can do that if we can have continuous practice and take incremental risks and build on it but then at this point of time it's not in the comfort zone like as shreya said even for me that's not in my comfort zone okay no you're right aditya about the practicing but i'll i'll put it this way i believe every trader like you said is playing a game right they're playing their own mm-hmm. game that you've made the rules for mm-hmm. now what rules have i made in my life that on a daily basis even like a, a non expiry day whatever my risk and reward on my capital is very little like my my risk will not exceed 1% of my capital very rarely it exceeds 1% of my capital um and uh, so if i have to take a 22% trade in a day let's say i had no position so when i would i return 22% on that day i doubt it right now mm-hmm. because I, let us say i've lost a big chunk and i'm talking about me and you know I, everyone has their own thing there's no way i would do that so in a day where i'm losing mm-hmm. at a time when i'm losing i'm increasing my risk and i'm talking about me personally here for me i would end up losing money on that second trade also because my psychology you can't change the person you are you can get all the practice you want you mm-hmm. can't change the person you are you can't take a x kind of trader and make him a y kind of trader because it is at the end of the day a reflection of how you are your and, personality and not trait how much you know exactly it's not how much you know na that's like, the beauty of trading i think yeah, yeah. so the everyone writes their own trading. story everyone has their own personality everyone has their own trading style it's not the same for any two of the person exactly exactly and you know he, while it might seem like you know uh, profile has something else to say i have something else to say in this in, this is the beauty of it yeah everyone's opinions are f- <laughs> totally freaking valid and it holds good for something else there are huge people like you take uh, Uh, some of the biggest traders who carry huge positions overnight between Wednesday and Thursday <laughs> because majority of the time even it's a hundred point gap up that put option going to lose money. Yeah. That's how it is, right? So uh, uh, that's how it is, and awesome. So Aditya, first of all, I think uh, this conversation, if nothing else, you know, it proves to everyone, all the viewers, that look, there is no set way of doing things, and as long as it fits with you personally, uh, if you are mm-hmm. someone who can function. calmly regardless because you understand truly the risks of your position because finally it comes down to understanding the risks of your positions and you have accepted it now when you truly accept that risk not much can shake you and you will be able to manage it because to put it quite simply 
if I was you and I had that position and I'm looking at 6%, I would have cut my trade right there. I would have gone home. I'd been like, I'm done. Because I know that if I continue to trade from there, simply because this is how I am conditioned over time, I would lose mm-hmm. more money. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I'm not just saying that. It's very likely that I would lose more money, which is why I'd be like, no, thank you. My, my technique is whenever I'm a little bit also shaken, I close. I'm out. I, th- I think my only advantage in the market has been running away and that's what has worked for me. Whereas for you, you know, you've, you've conditioned, you, you've seen that many times that position going against you and you fixed it. So that's awesome. But I want to go back to something that you said earlier uh, about, you know, your entire perspective changing once you um, came mm-hmm. on to uh, social media and you started interacting with yeah. uh, uh, DJ Sir and Mitesh Bhai and, you know, you have mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, worked with them. So uh, DJ Sir, I know personally, is very, very sweet gentleman. So I just mm-hmm. want to understand how much of an impact has that had on you and, uh, uh, you know, what, what was that part? So like? I speak to him on a regular basis and what I learned from him is not some trading strategy or some secret holy grail strategy, but how he thinks, how he thinks about trading and making profits. So the best thing what I learned from him is the MTM failing. So what happens, so what used to happen is that when I was in one lakh profit and some spike came in bank nifty, my profit used to pipe out and turn into a loss. So what he told me is that if you are in one lakh profit and your profit goes to 70,000, just book your profits. At least do it once. You can always get back in afterwards, but don't let the, but don't let the profits go away. Book your profits at least once. So that's one very important thing which I learned from DJ sir. And I also learned yeah. from him that you don't have to hit six on every ball. Just hit six on a loose ball. He likes to call himself the Dravid. All the set. Yeah. So that's one thing which I learned that don't go aggressive into every trade you take. Just be calm and just hit six on a loose ball. When you get when you get such trades, like the market is throwing money at you. Only take a risk on such trades. And don't just blindly take risk. That is such so excellent advice. So these are the principles advice, I yeah. learned from him. And I also learned from him. Actually, he advised me recently that keep on buying stocks. Start to yeah. invest for long term. Start to buy blue chips. He advised me the same thing. And that's also something you do. And that's also something you do, I think. Yeah. You have a big portfolio. So, and he also told me to just stick with the top stocks, the only blue chip stocks. Yeah. Asian Paints, HDFC Bank, TCS. He asked me and to do the same thing. Like yeah. Every expiry, your profit will be 20% you just buy off at whatever the price there is. You might think that, okay, mm-hmm. I might be buying at a high price. I might not be getting, I'm not, I, mean, I might not be getting an opportunity to buy the dip or something. But over the long run, everything just evens out. Just keep buying every Thursday. Your profit will be expiry mm-hmm. day. Se, 20% buy kar lo stocks. You'll, you'll thank me later. Yeah, the same thing you told me. <laughs> That That's is excellent the... advice. Sorry. <laughs> you want to transition to passive income at some point. Yeah. And you want to yeah. be able to do other things. Because the way I see it as, as a trader, if you're not like in a position to, mm-hmm. you know, at some point take a back seat and be like, I, I want to chill a yeah. little bit and still have investments uh, making money for you. Uh, but I think that's that's great advice. Awesome. See, this is, uh, Shresh, this is one thing which there is a misconception about because people look at us as like money minting people, right? Like, ha, yaar, matlab, mouse click karte hai and paise a jata hai, so what are these guys doing? But it's still work. There is a lot of there's a lot of work that goes behind this, right? So active trading is like a regular job itself. So people don't understand it. Ha, trader bole to, ah, tum to yaar, matlab, computer ke samne baithte ho, paise banate ho. So even that waiting for your trades to come out profitable, that waiting is also a job. Definitely. Because you not doing anything when the market doesn't ask you to do anything requires a good amount of willpower, right? Like when the market says don't do anything and you not doing anything is also work in itself. I'll put it this way, okay. Day trading is like working in a factory. Okay, It's literally <laughs> like you're going there like in a steel factory and hammering that steal into shape that's what day trading is like if you are a uh, someone who's trading positional trading trading more than 45 uh, days to expiry stuff like that then maybe it's more like a white collar job <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so it's quite boring i think so yeah it's, it's, quite it's a little more boring but, yeah but day trading is no less than working in a factory and tr- mm-hmm. like i i was just talking about this like uh, last week 
I think expiry trading, especially in a way, it's like a love-hate relationship because <laughs> you make money or not, you're still going to be. It's a stressful thing. People don't realize that you learn to deal with stress better the longer you do something. It doesn't make it less stressful. Yeah, it it is a Absolutely stressful true. process. Um, so it it is active. earning and I, i'm sure if you were to compare lifespans expiry traders would have below average lifespan versus uh, so it's important to focus on your health i i've also started doing a little bit of exercise inspired by you praful thoda bahut so like <laughs> so awesome that uh, beautiful conversation aditya it's uh, such a pleasure to have yeah. you and uh, you know just literally i think people people have so much to take away from this even at the points where we differ i think there's so much to take away from yeah. it because it's all about and i want to add just one point i want to add one point that most people want to make huge returns they want to make like 15% roi but they should understand that even i have made 100% in a year but my monthly goal is just 4% if i have a 10% monthly goal it puts a pressure on me which is not good that's true so 4% keeps the pressure off me and also whatever i get more than 4% i just consider it as just a bonus so that's how one should think and one should not target huge rois in a month itself i think this comes from uh, mitesh patel mitesh bhai i guess because he keeps t- saying in yes. all his videos to yes. 4% target karo jo bhi upar aayega wo bonus hai exactly i learned this from him i learned a lot from him basically <laughs> So thank you so much Aditya for sharing all your experiences I'm sure um, you know it has been a huge learning experience for everyone who's watched this and uh, looking forward to connect with you more and seeing how you evolve as a trader um, you know, we were talking offline about how you are now looking at uh, diversifying into certain other strategies as your capital grows so I wish you all the very best with that and thank you so much for joining us thanks for having me this episode can resonate with a lot of people because there is a lot of young crowd who want to trade right after graduation but they don't know how to convince their parents how to raise capital like how should i start with a low capital so agar low capital rehta hai to mai can i make uh, enough money so that i can support myself and my family so if not when should i ask the next round of capital from my parents so how should i be uh, accountable so agar humko koi paise de raha hai तो वॉट शुड बी द बेसिक एटिकेट कि हाँ जाके उनको बताओ कि ये हो रहा है ये हो रहा है गिव दम कीप दम अपडेटेड सो ऑल दीज थिंग्स आई थिंक पीपल कैन टेक अवे अ लॉट ऑफ दीज पॉइंट फ्रॉम दिस एपिसोड एंड अगेन अनदर थिंग इज दैट लाइक ट्विटर हैज बीन ब्रांडेड एज हाँ यहाँ पे लोग आते हैं उसका उनका कोर्स बेचते हैं कुछ तो फेक स्क्रीन शॉट्स लगाते हैं ये करते हैं वो करते हैं बट देर इज देर इज एन अदर साइड टू इट देर आर लॉड ऑफ जेन्यून पीपल देर आर लॉड ऑफ गुड पीपल बिकॉज श्रे इस लास्ट टाइम वी हैड yogeshwar also even he talked about how he has been influenced by a lot of good people on twitter and how he learned so many stuff regarding trading from a lot of these good traders so it's just that like don't get logon ko kya hota hai bada screenshot dalta hai badi gaadi dikhata hai bada ek lavish fancy lifestyle dikhata hai to unko maan lete ki hai guru ji hai to ye ye chal raha hai pata hai guru ji ka kuch to chal raha tha twitter pe so don't 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 go by uh, what they show but go like just follow them for a couple of uh, months or something and then assess that okay so this person is right to be called a mentor or something there are a lot of genuine good um, helpful people on twitter community so make use of that and i'm sure you guys got a lot of takeaways from this video and um, yeah we'll catch up in our next episode thank you have a great weekend bye bye